Hello, Miani here, and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV. I was asked more recently in direct message where to get the new dies in patch 5.21, and whilst I answered that message directly, I did notice there was a few other questions similar to it. So here we are, a die showcase of patch 5.21. To get the new dies then, firstly, very simply put, you have to engage with either the market board with the player economy to get them, or the Ishgard restoration. In the Ishgard restoration added in 5.21 with the second phase, you can create items with collectible synthesis, using items then gathered from the new 5.21 version of the diadem to turn in at a collectible synthesis NPC. This person will give a varying amount of Sky Builder scripts for your turn in, with expert recipes offering way more scripts as a reward amongst other things, and other recipes giving much less usually depending on level and difficulty. Visiting the diadem and actually gathering items towards this crafting effort even gives you scripts for turning these in and giving them the approved version, the stamp of approval, which allows you to craft with them in the first place, will actually get you scripts as well, although it's a lot less than turning in your crafted items. So even gatherers can take part from these turn-ins. Once you have a decent amount of Sky Builder scripts in your currency window, you can exchange them for a ton of items at the nearby script vendor. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom of this list, you'll see that there is a selection of brand new dyes added in 5.21. Ruby Red, Cherry Pink, Canary Yellow, Vanilla Yellow, Dragoon Blue and Turquoise Blue will all cost 100 scripts per pot, and then the most expensive of which is the Pearl White, Gunmetal Black and the Metallic Brass that will cost 500 scripts per pot of dye. Obviously, you want to look if your server is selling them cheaper, or if it's cheaper to get the scripts. Nine times out of ten, it is always easier to actually just go and get them yourself. However, I know a lot of people do actually prefer to just buy stuff straight away, and obviously it depends on how many people actually take part in the Ishgard restoration regularly. I've seen a lot less people do it, simply because the ranking is ended for this particular season. I thought it would be a good idea then to show off a variety of gear in these dies, so let's do exactly that. So the first outfit I wanted to demo then using Ruby Red, this is the Star Velvet Hood of Casting with the Rebel Coat, Demonic Slops and a Scion Sorceress High Boots from the Yishtola outfit, something I wanted to put together for my own Red Mage and my casting set in general, using Ruby Red for the helm and chest there specifically. I love how striking Ruby Red is, back in a time where Dalamud Red was king, and I thought it couldn't get any more red than Ruby Red came along and saved the day. It's a lovely, daring colour for sure. Here it is again, this time on the Ao Yi, the Quanlegs there, and uh, Nirvana with some Moonfire sandals. I really like how eye-poppingly gorgeous this colour is in general, and it works on a real variety of different textures especially metal as well as you can see here with this particular glamour we looked at this previously i made a few minor adjustments to it most notably it's now ruby red instead of wine red i think honestly this is one of the most striking colors for metal that there is i've got the neo ishgardian sword here with the dominus shield we have the deep gold helm of fending, we have the Gordian plate mail of fending there for a chest, the high Mithrite gauntlets of fending, the elemental trousers of fending plus one, and I believe the Doman iron greaves of fending, all of those dyed glorious ruby red, and I think they really go quite well together. Um, I'm really proud of that one actually, it's really really nice. But yeah, let's move on to other colours, there's more than just red. So, onto Cherry Pink, one of the other dyes added. It wouldn't be right to show this off without the bunny outfit for this one first. Looking as bouncy as ever here in bright, hot Cherry Pink. This is the Bun Bun suit then, dyed Cherry Pink from a new Easter event in-game we looked at the other day. I love how bright and obnoxious this colour is, and it's pretty awesome to be honest. And uh, I've seen a lot of people do exactly this with their own bunny suit and uh, there's a, a bunny of every colour of the rainbow to be sure. 
He is then the Favnerian set for females, complete with headdress, bustier, armlets, tights, and sandals. Looking very cute in this hot pink. This is the perfect accompaniment to a dancer, in my opinion, and nothing says Favnir much like bright hot pink to go with the dance moves that come with it. And let's finish this preview of Cherry Pink with the full Neo Ishgardian tanking set. So, this is the fending set with its steampunk elements and this garish bright pink. I've dyed it. Deliberately, then, I wanted to show the sheer clash of color that this dye actually brings to the table, especially on more subtle designs such as these Neo Ishgardian sets, which are a lot more simplified. Um, that don't really probably go with this sort of color scheme, but uh, you can really see how vibrant it is in comparison to the other textures here. Honestly, without some of these new dyes, you really wonder how we settled for anything less pre 5.21. Okay, Canary Yellow, a bright yellow dye, much brighter than Honey Yellow, which I would usually go for in my glamour choices, but a slight amount of shine is added to this dye naturally. This is the Kupo outfit first, then, that you get from the restoration on the Scratch Card minigame. We did a video on this previously, if you want to check that out. It's a nice looking outfit and actually doesn't look too bad in this bright yellow. Canary Yellow, then, is, I think, sorely underused. I don't actually see many people currently wearing it, but that might change in the future, especially as people discover its usability. Here we are in a replica Sky Rat striking set, and I'm getting so many Kill Bill vibes from this, it's unreal. But at the same time, what a glorious combination with that black inlay, and then that contrast of the bright canary yellow. This is literally what this die was put into the game to achieve. It's striking, literally, pun intended, and this really is best shown off when used on strong items that cover a lot of their surface with the selected die, especially when it's as strong as this one. I'm really excited to try other sets with this, especially with repeated black lines. So Canary Yellow's final preview then, I wanted to be this. This is the late Allegan casting set from the latest PvP iteration, the Wolf's Den Pier set. You can buy Wolf Wolf Marks. It shows how gold looking this Canary Yellow can actually be if you apply it to metallic surfaces. But at the same time, this sort of velvet-like fabric on the chest looks pretty good and it's got this real weird sheen to it and it's darker sheen really changes the way that this dye looks you wouldn't immediately think this was canary yellow if i showed you this you'd probably say it was gold that's why dyes can be so integral to a glamour set at the end of the day because they all each and every one of them on the spectrum have their own use on something somewhere in the game it all depends on how things react differently to the surface they're applied to much like in real life Okay, let's move on to Vanilla Yellow, an unusual colour to say the least, a much more faded colour than the others on this list of new dyes. And here we have it on my Dragoon. This is another set I made a video on a while ago using the Oni, the Ow Oni Halberd there, the Dome and Steel Armour of Maiming, Replica Dreadworm Chest, Gauntlets of the Behemoth Queen, Ward Knight's Trousers, and I believe the Dome and Steel Greaves of Maiming. Looking very different in this lighter colour than my usual solid yellow that I would go for. Vanilla Yellow is a subtle colour, and whilst it looks okay here, it's probably better used on fabric than these metal surfaces, although I do like this different look. This then is the Valentione's outfit from the most recent Valentine's Day event. Looking pretty good in vanilla yellow. It's definitely offering a much more subtle yellow than I would choose normally for this, but it looks pretty great against the black like many other yellows would, especially with those hearts there. I like how the sheen on it gives a much cleaner look than some of the more opaque dyes with this sort of like cream color it's quite similar in the base game. There's a lot cleaner in this particular die um, for sure. It's offering quite a different look here. I really like those tights though with this color especially and I'll probably end up reusing that idea in the future. And finally the choir outfit is what I wanted to finish this preview with. 
Um, it's bright, it's almost too bright for my photo studio area, to be honest with you. Showing just how bright then the game fades the colour on some of the pieces. If you remember, there are outfits in the game that wash out sections of whatever you dye them on one part of it, usually quite annoying. The choir outfit does this as well towards the bottom section of the robe, as you can see, but because of the sheen this dye has over normal yellow colours, it actually blends very close to a white, more than a cream, and I think it works quite well as a result. Next up is Dragoon Blue. Firstly, on the housemaid outfit here, I wanted to show it on a sort of typical use fabric set, showing off its inky blue darkness and the contrast with another bright colour here. It's such a good dye if you want this darker blue tone, especially if you wanted to dye jeans or boots to go with a set. I would imagine this would look great on the Tantalus outfit. I think that the maid outfit demonstrates an opaque texture perfectly for this demonstration. Little light is being reflected here and the blue is almost void-like, absorbing all of that colour. Next up, the toad suit. The reason I chose this to preview is there is a a large surface area to die on and a good example of some washed out textures as well. The chin and belly of this suit fades to this much lighter blue as you apply the colour and the fabric takes on this more cottony feel sort of felt texture which has much greater shine than the made outfit which in turn is making it feel much brighter to preview here. It's a pretty decent colour but where it shines the most, pun intended, is on metal, in my opinion. The Yangshin fending set here with its horns a plenty looks great in Dragoon Blue. The plate mail effect really does justice to the colour and brings out the other essential details that might usually be hidden by a brighter colour. It is truly a beautiful texture to apply this darker colour on, and I'm a real sucker for blacks and blues in this game. Hints of red, probably, and plenty of chrome or brass inlay that's the ticket to making me smile. Absolutely delicious and a great representation on why this dye is one of my favourite unmetallic metallic colours that you can use. Turquoise then looking great on this Far Eastern schoolgirls attire from the Mog Station, complete with ribbon and hakama and boot laces that dye. I really love the way that the turquoise reacts to fade outs and this pattern on the chest illustrates the faded version next to the natural full dye palette of the colour. It looks great in contrast with other block colours like black really nicely. Since we're on the topic of Mog Station items, let's show off the Far Eastern Socialites attire, showing how pretty the colour is when it gets the lion's share of the surface area on an outfit to affect. The pattern on this outfit was always one of my favourites with the slightly blurred out flowers and butterfly, but this colour really does this set justice. Every part of it is brought to life by its bright effervescence. I'm a massive fan of this dye colour and I have so many thanks for Square Enix for giving it to us. It's going to allow for so many different ideas to come to light. And finally, here's a metallic version of this, the Gordian Fending set, the full set from Gordius, and oh, it's one of the best tanking tier sets in the game, in my opinion, and holy crap does it look amazing in turquoise. I'm sorry, but this is pure hotness. The goldy brass inlay and details there, the way the turquoise shines on the metallic surfaces, the way light hits it as you move, my goodness, it's just made for the set in so many different ways. Perfection has never looked so good. And yeah, if you can't tell already, Turquoise is definitely one of my favourites added in the patch. Just, oh, it looks so good in so many different ways on so many different outfits. Go and buy it. It's relatively cheap for what it is. So, Gunmetal Black then, the most velvety velvet of velvet dyes possible. This solid shiny black can turn pretty much any fabric into leather or velvet. It's the shiniest black we have access to in the game. And as you can see, even on this bunny chief outfit from the gold saucer, has a lot of light reflection with very little absorption, which is rare for a colour like this. It's jet black basically with more shine and reflection to it, and I love it. A ton of people also love it, and the demand is absolutely ridiculous, with high costs from scripts and even higher costs with gill. 
Here we are again, this time with the Far Eastern ladies attire from the Mog Station, the Togi here, having serious reflections, and the gunmetal black actually makes it much more like a satin themed dress. It has some really nice shine to it, and you can really see the various creases in the dress as it curves around your figure. I love this dress, and I love this color on it. It's very pretty indeed, and the sort of thing you'd want to wear to a cocktail bar. And finally, the Golden Wolf set from the PvP Garrow event. This is the Paladin armor that you could get back in the Garrow event back in the Wolf's Den Pier, and it looks pretty great in Gunmetal Black. The shine is still there and almost turns this metal into leather or a form of rubber. It's a really strange effect, but just shows one of its many uses and how versatile this die can be. Someone described to me privately that this die is the instant rubber PVC button, and honestly I'd have to agree. It's great, has many uses, and provides a great alternative to the jet black or the opaque soot black that we have previously. And on to the second favourite die, it seems, of the community right now, if the sales on the market board are anything to go by, the Pearl White die. Looking pretty great on this Spriggan outfit from last year's Hatching Tide, or this year on the Mog Station if you'd rather, complete with the brightest reflections known to man from a die that you can expect. It's the combination of silver and pure white, and as a result, my photo studio is way too bright to give this die any justice. But it looks really good. Turning fabric into metallic sheen, I absolutely love it. It looks so good on so many different sets. Now onto the songbird attire with all of those small black sections on the fabric and gold inlay details. I love the way the shine is constantly changing depending on the reflections. It really is a high quality look and I think it complements it really well. The main reason I wanted to share this on the songbird attire with this color is my favorite usually is pure white on this dress and I have to say I think that's actually changed primarily due to how well this reacts to the light around you and the texture texture seems to appreciate the palette a lot better than the solid block colour that pure white is. Finally then, for pearl white, let's look at the Eureka Elemental Fending Plus One armour set from Hydatos. I love this set with a passion, and the pearl white adds a lot of depth to the metal for sure. I had to change the lighting in the studio slightly here, as it was way too bright with my usual lighting. Uh, settings so the glow from the outfit was actually making it blur into one so I turned that down so we could preview it better it's a great looking set I think made even cooler looking with pearl white and it goes really well with sets with uh, gold or black in them if you've noticed direct contrast to its color but it's much like the gunmetal black offers a very unique look to an armor that you place it on a happy medium between snow white and that dullness and pure white of that brightness but enough silver to make it completely different and shine and sparkle okay on to the final die of this preview video metallic brass an excellent choice for those who prefer a more deeper darker looking color than canary yellow or conventional gold this then is the fairy tale princess attire from the mog station demonstrating the fabric effect you get on cloth looking very nice here mimicking a lighter gold color and i think it looks really nice in general the way that the die fades on outfits is to go slightly creepy me, and I think that's way better than some of the yellows we had in the game previously, where this would have actually been a washed out white instead. On the angel attire from the Mog Station then, to demonstrate a slightly different fabric type, this looks a lot darker in places due to the surface texture. I like how the brass is giving a much richer gold appearance than actual gold would in this case in my opinion, with some great shadows and highlights. It's really nice to look at for sure. And finally, on metal surfaces, we have the augmented deep shadow tanking set, the full set here, looking absolutely glorious in metallic brass, with red sections bringing the brass to life in places. The small black sections and chrome boots look really nice with this color backdrop. It's a beautiful looking tank set, and I like the way that the brass reacts to the metal surface. There are plenty of brass themed tanking and maiming sets already in the game, but not all of them can look truly like a brass chest plate 
with the dyes we had previously. Plenty of shine added to this dye option means that you can mix and match much more freely, and it'll actually be a lot easier to match the chest to another item, for example, where usually matching metal colors is an absolute nightmare when making your own custom glams. In general, the new dyes are fantastic in this patch, a long overdue addition to the game that literally adds thousands of new glamour options with such a small set of additions. I really am grateful to Square Enix to have new colours, and I think that they should add way more if this was a simple process. It would be great to have more greens and oranges, and that's what I hope for in the future. Either way, let me know if you have your own favourites from these new colours below. Thank you all kindly for watching, and I'll see you all next time.